Hello, my friends. It is now Friday, the fourth week of Lent, and the title for our devotion today is The Beard of God. We're going to take our Bibles and we're going to open them up to the Old Testament. That's right. We're going to take them and open them to Isaiah 50 so that we can read verses 4 through 9 together. Now, as you know, I have my Bible all set. So this is your opportunity to press pause so that you can open your Bibles to Isaiah 50. As soon as you're ready, you press play again and we're going to read this together. Okay? Okay. Isaiah 50, 4 through 9 says this. The Lord God has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning, he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who would pull out my beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Did you hear the part about the beard? Mm -hmm. Now, let's go ahead and jump into our devotion here. A sure way to torture a person is to pull out his hair. How much more so when the hair is pulled out of a person's face? No man in his right mind would allow someone to pull out his beard if he could do anything to prevent it. I mean, think about that. Someone might grab you from from behind or from the side um, as you're walking past them. Um, You know, in football, sometimes we see those guys now that have got the long hair that comes out of their helmet. And I always wonder, oh my gosh, are they going to get their hair pulled? I know that's not what I should be thinking about, but I do. I think about that. Or um, or if you've ever held a little child in your lap and they're kind of just playing with the, with the little hairs on your arms. Um, I know that my husband before has had our nieces and nephews think it was really funny to like pull at his leg hair when he's not really paying attention. So think about that, like how those things can accidentally happen without you really noticing it. But then to allow someone to pull out your beard hair, right? Um, That is face to face. That is, I am intentionally doing this. And then as our reading just said, to let that happen or, or, or to enable that to happen. So let's keep going here. In the ancient world, nearly all men allowed their beards to grow. Therefore, a man whose beard had been pulled out had been forcefully subjected to someone else's power and will. It was a sign of disgrace and shame. But Isaiah spoke of the suffering servant who would allow the unthinkable. He would allow others to pull out his beard. Other men did suffer the humiliation and agony of someone pulling out their beard against their will. But this suffering servant is the son of God. He has the power and dominion over all things. If anyone is going to pluck out the beard of God, It will only happen because he gives himself up to this excruciating torment. Jesus was willingly obedient, even to the point of horrible death. He did it to rescue you eternally from pain and death. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, by your willingness to endure crucifixion for us, embolden us to face the struggle against our sinful flesh and to live in your holiness. In your name we pray, amen, amen. Oh boy, this is one to kind of sit and think about a little bit, isn't it? Um, It's just one more layer of what our Lord and Savior allowed himself to undergo as our suffering servant. I love you so much, my friends, and I'll meet you back here tomorrow. Bye.